our, our next speaker today is Mahfuz Rahman from Ryan Hibbs Group at UT Southwestern. And today he's gonna to be talking about cryo AM structure of native muscle type nicotinic acetylcholine, the acetylcholine receptor and inhibition by snake venom toxins. So with that, Mahfuz, I will turn it over to you and thank you for joining us today and for presenting. Hi Pete, thanks for the introduction. So my slide is okay? Yep, your slides are up and full screen and everything looks good. Okay, thanks. Thanks Peter and thanks to the SB Grid for giving me the opportunity to present my work here. And currently I'm working as postdoc at HIPS lab at UT Southwestern Medical Center. And today I will present our recently published structure of the native muscle type nicotinic acetylcholine receptor in complex with snake phenom toxin. So this acetylcholine receptor can be subdivided uh, on uh, subdivided into two based on their agonist activity. One is the muscanic receptor, which is the G protein coupled receptor, and other one is the nicotinic receptor, which is the pentameric ligand gated ion channels. And based on their location, this nicotine receptor can be further subdivided into two types, neuronal and the muscle type. The muscle type nicotine receptor can be found at the neuromuscular junction, and they are consist of two alpha subunit, one beta, one gamma, and one delta subunit. There are two ligand binding sites on the receptor, and they are the cationic ion channel. This protein has a long history over the century. Lenly first identified the nicotinic receptor at the neuromuscular junction in 1905. And later, McPherson's work led to the discovery that torpedo fish also contains a nicotinic receptor similar to the muscle type nicotinic receptor. Since then, this torpedo receptor act as a prototype for the ligand-gated ion channels. With the great findings of Lee in 1963 that a snake phenom toxin, alpha bangortoxin, can block the action of the nicotinic receptor at the neuromuscular junction. And this provides a high affinity reagent. And using this reagent alpha bangortoxin, Shangju first characterized the nicotinic receptor from the fish source. And this was the first uh, history of ion channel purification. And Anwin is very famous in our field and he is also a pioneer in the torpedo nicotinic receptor structure analysis from 1980s. And with the advancement of technology using the same tubular crystals, the resolution got improved but lacking a high resolution which limits the structure and function correlation. I purified the nicotinic receptor from the electric organ of Torpedo Californica, and I extracted the receptor from membrane using the detergent Triton X100. Our collaborator synthesized an affinity reagent for the purification, and I exchanged the detergent Triton X100 to DDM in column. And finally, I eluted the receptor with agonist carbacol. The affinity chromatography yielded highly purified receptor. And the size fluorescent size exclusion chromatography revealed that the receptors are mainly dimers of pentamers. But this is not surprising because in torpedo native membrane also this receptor stayed as a dimer. And our main objective was to solve the high resolution structure of a functional receptor in a lipid-like environment or membrane environment. To define the lipid, we used the first clamp electrophysiology, and we found that the agonist purified receptor after reconstitution in soil lipid showed robust, robust channel activity. So for the structural analysis, we used the same lipid, soil lipid, in presence of sapogen. And finally, I added Bangor toxin, the big antagonist, to help in the particle alignment. And a small cryon data set revealed that 
it is dimer limit the structure analysis due to their multiple orientation in the sample. Previously, it was reported that this dimer easily can be reduced to monomer and the monomer is as functional as dimer after reconstituted into the lipid. Similar way I did the dimer to monomer reduction and in my final grid sample, mostly the monomeric receptors. After a few optimization, we collected the cryos data set over 7,000 images, which yield of around 400,000 fine particles after 2D classification. And the 3D classification revealed that only one third of the particles contains the density from whole receptor, which is the final resolution of 2.7 angstrom. The receptor toxin form, form a T-shaped structure and the subunit arrangement is alpha, gamma, alpha, delta, and beta in the counterclockwise and they contain a extracellular, very large extracellular domain where the ligands binds and toxin are binding in, in the interface of alpha gamma and alpha delta. This, this gamma and delta subunit are readily distinguishable from other subunit because of the glycosylation site at the top and the, in the extracellular domain, there is extra density from this position from extended C-terminal and loop F. This structural feature was not resolved previously with any other receptor. And in our structure, in the interface of two subunit at the transmembrane domain, we could observe some extra densities and we assigned them as PC lipid due to their abundancy at the lipid. And the resolution was high enough to build the model very confidently and also it could be more than 100 water molecules. For alpha Bangortok gene recognition, four architectural elements underpin the recognition. So this is the alpha subunit, and from here the loop C extensively interact with the toxin, and the branch and glycan originated from cis loop interacting with the toxin, and also other side with the loop C. And from the non-alpha subunit, the loop F surrounds the toxin from another side, and the C terminal supports the loop F at the binding site. Let's see more detail of the interaction here. So this Bangor toxin is the member of three finger toxin. And among these three fingers, the middle finger inserted deeply under the loop C of alpha subunit. And this guanidium group of this, this toxin mimic the acetylcholine binding site. And they are stabilized by the cation pi interaction from this very conserved aromatic residues, this tyrosine and this tryptophan from alpha subunit and this tryptophan from non-alpha subunit, also from a phenylalanine from the toxin itself. Like human, the mongoose and cobra are not sensitive to the alpha bangortoxin due to the substitution of this tryptophan to asparagine, which will introduce a glycosylation site and inhibit the bangortoxin binding. Similar way, honey badger and pig also insensitive due to substitution in the similar position with arginine. Moreover, the most abundant nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, alpha-4, beta-2 is also insensitive to bangortoxin and one of the major substitution of this, this tyrosine to lysine. And lysine in this position will clash with the bangortoxin binding. So the, so the permeation pathway comprises a very large extracellular domain, which is, uh, which is uh, strongly electronegative. And this is favorable for the cation to concentrate. And they contains a, a tra narrow transmembrane domain and from the midpoint of the TMD is strongly hydrophobic. This is the representative TMD pore helices and the most constrict gate is formed in the midpoint by this leucine nine prime position. We also could, could see another additional gate at 16 prime position. 
and comparison with other antagonist bound structure of the superfamily refill the conservation of this nine prime leucine gate while variably decreased at the 16 prime position. And this nine prime leucine gate is generally conserved in aporeceptor structure as well. And structure analysis revealed that earlier torpedo models contains some issues over amino acid registration, the structure of loops and termini, and also the subunit register error. The low resolution map might give some answer of this question, but we found another issue of magnification error. Let me explain this one here. So when I superimpose our model green with Anwen's model, the orange one, we could see it seems the Anwen models appears globally expanded. And when we compare the interface area between subunit, the Anwen's models value show almost half of our structure. While our structural value is very consistent with recently solved high resolution structure from this superfamily. So this low resolution map is from Anwen's work, which was obtained from native membrane and was never been treated with any detergent. This more fitted model is ours and the map looks longer and longer compared to our model and not fitted very well. But it was very exciting to see that our model fit his map very, very well after adjustment to the pixel size. It gives us more confidence that purification in detergent does not affect the conformation observed in native membrane. So to summarize our findings, the purification was coupled with liposome pass clamp experiments for nanodisc deconstitution of functional receptor. And the high resolution map allows for confident building of majority of receptors and toxins. And the toxin recognition involves several structural elements and competes directly for agonist binding site. The pore is in a close conformation with hydrophobic gates. And comparison with earlier structural information reveal a likely magnification error in addition to subunit and amino acid register issues. And near perfect agreement otherwise with the map from native torpedo membrane. So I'd like to finish with acknowledgement slide. I would like to thank Ryan for being such a good mentor and guiding me throughout this project. And thanks to Jin Feng for the electrophysiology work and thanks to Colin and UTSW CMF and PNCC for spinning and data collection. And thanks to Leah for the artwork in my first slide and rest of our lab members for being so supportive. Finally, thanks to Michael, our collaborator, for being an amazing collaborator. Thanks, everybody. Now I am open for discussion. Thanks, Mathus. That was a, a very interesting talk. Thank so you. For, the, for the folks in the audience, if you have questions, feel free to send them in chat, and we'll unmute you to ask. I get two questions that I, occurred to me as we were talking, and my background is not cryo -EM, it's crystallography, but you, your, your discussion about the magnification issues reminded me of something that I'd run across trying to compare cryo-EM data, you know, 10 years ago with x-ray data, which is, how do you figure out what the magnification is? So, actually, in the, in the P-direct detector days, it was very common because uh, mostly the resolution was very low resolution and nobody very much cared about, uh, very much about that. But now with the high resolution factor, yes, the uh, magnification error might be, now everybody is very much concerned about this. Is that something where you're always comparing the, versus a, an atomic model to try to gauge the scale? Or is there? So actually, this is a good idea. And we are thinking from this that uh, we, can, we can see our receptor in the native membrane, what it looks like. Uh, in the low resolution map and we can compare with our high resolution structure in the after detergent extraction. And this is a good idea to compare with 
native membrane or uh, in an original membrane-like environment. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, was, I was interested when I find stuff I don't know and get to ask questions about it. So we, we've, we've got another question. Feel free to ask away. Uh, I have, my question is twofold. So for the extracellular domain, we have a uh, previous structures from the acetylcholine binding protein with um, cobra and bunger toxins. Mm -hmm. And you um, alluded to, um, you know, some improvements of your structure over the uh, previous torpedo structure. My question is, I think the F loop is a major difference compared to these two previous structures. What do you think is the most striking thing we learn from your structure in comparison to the past reports from the binding protein and the previous torpedo structure? So thank you. So actually the findings from the structure is numerous. So this loop F is, is very, uh, is very large compared to other previously reported structures. So if I show you like for annuals, so this is from alpha sub in it I have, and if you give me a chance, I would like to share the other my backup slides. This is like the delta sub unit I am talking about. So this is the loop F. You could see the previous structure, it was not there. And this is also true for other receptor or acetylcholine BP structure. Uh, so this loop F is very extended in case of muscle type nicotinic receptor, and they have a extended C terminal. So the structure of the Loop C is also very different to other structure. So in, in case of muscle type, there is additional one extra residues in the loop C, which actually makes the loop C in, in our structure is the green. So you could see that the conformation of the loop C is quite different from others. So from the previous structure that I was talking about, that we, we compared with other present structure from the, in our paper more widely. So let me show you for quick. So, so my question is more like, of course, the C and F loops are going to be different mm -hmm. because you're using Bunger toxin, which locks the protein in a certain conformation. Mm -hmm. My question is more like in terms of functional relevance, like you mentioned, having an extra long C terminus or extra long F terminus or F loop. Um, what do you think is the functional implications of these differences? Oh, oh, do you have any speculations? Yeah, oh, yes, yes. So for Bunger toxin binding and also, so we could say more about when we will have the agonist binding form and from, from the Bunger toxin binding, we could understand that in the binding site, uh, so, so there is an effect from the from the loop F and C terminal in the binding site. So if we have the agonist binding site, we could say more about the recognition for agonist, but for the, for the toxin, we could say that loop F have some, uh, some sensitivity and also selectivity for the Bungar toxin. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any more questions in the chat, so I think Thank, thank you again for presenting. And thank, thank you everybody in the audience for joining us today. Yeah, thanks everybody.